What do you get when you cross opera star Renee Fleming with rock star Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead and Indian classical music virtuoso Zakir Hussain, making music for healing in the middle of a pandemic. It's called drone music and embraces ancient healing and meditation traditions. Music and medicine it goes back uh, as far as history goes back, you know, sh shamanism, uh, people live by that. We are taught that when somebody got sick in the house, we were told to play our tanpura, which is a, the drone instrument. And when you think about um, these types of therapies and interventions, they're non-pharmaceutical. Um, they're very low cost, and uh, they, they really are working. The power of music to heal, or at the very least promote well-being, is well documented in most cultures, but it's only been in the last two decades that the scientific and medical communities have come together in an effort to prove its efficacy and the possibilities of including it in medical protocols. Okay, here we go. One. Suddenly these things that were One. simply left to speculation and to theory, we now have measurements on, we have data, we have the ability to actually observe the human brain doing these remarkable music and artistic tasks. Dr. Charles Lim is the co-director of the Sound Health Network at the University of California, San Francisco. It's a collaboration with scientists from National Institutes of Health and artists from the National Endowment for the Arts and the Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts. Okay, we're gonna get started. Sound good? Yeah. One thing I've noticed in all of the musical experiments I've done is that when you listen to a musical stimulus and you look at the brain while that's being listened to, the entire brain is really engaged. So music is a robust stimulus for the brain. Advances in MRI technology have allowed researchers to scan musicians' brains while playing music to observe how music affects different brain functions. I think we're ready to get you set up in the scanner. It surprised the scientists as well, not just me, that the most powerful effect on my brain in this experiment, which had me singing, imagining singing, and speaking, was imagining singing. Thank you for a wonderful presentation. Covering Renee Fleming ground, spent much of the past year working with scientists and medical experts on how best to advance the music and healing connection with her series of podcasts called Music and Mind. The discovery, for instance, that there's a music room in the brain, that it's, it's distinct from speech, was really key, very important. Daniel Levitin, the McGill and Stanford University's neuroscientist, music composer, and best-selling author of This Is Your Brain on Music, believes the most likely the therapeutic uses ago, of music will be for treating the less functioning cognitive parts of the brain caused by Alzheimer's and other brain diseases. In Parkinson's disease, music is helpful because it sets a, a pace or a tempo, and often Parkinson's patients can't walk because they're frozen and the music gives them a pulse that causes neurons in their brain, in the basal ganglia and cerebellum, the motor action centers, to synchronize with the tempo, and that helps them to start walking and to keep walking. You can't repair broken neural connections, but you can make new ones. Anytime you learn something new, those are new neural pathways. Practicing an instrument, learning an instrument, develops these pathways. My grandmother, who had Alzheimer's, and she was fading, and she hadn't spoken about three or four years. I started playing the drum, and she was smiling, you know, as best she could, and then she said my name. It was a startling discovery, uh, and it kind of uh, lit my light. Grateful Dead drummer Mickey Hart has been working with UCSF neurologist Dr. Adam Ghazali to determine which rhythms might be more effective than others for treating damaged parts of the brain. My brain, you know, rhythm central. So seeing how it reacted to certain beats, loud, soft, fast, slow, was uh, a revelation. Perhaps one of Renee's most revealing music therapy experiences 
was with Army Captain Louis Avila, who lost his ability to speak after an IED explosion in Afghanistan. Intensive music therapy helped him regain his voice and eventually his speech. And to see that it, that was such an extraordinary gift to him through melodic intonation therapy, which is the name of this particular therapy, to regain some speech, to regain his ability to communicate, that's an incredible gift. The one thing that I've noticed about making music in the time of this pandemic, when you are isolated, that there's that much more deeper connection with what you're trying to achieve. Zakir Hussain, Mickey Hart, and Renee Fleming's pandemic drone ensemble of sorts was one of the 10 pieces of drone music recorded remotely for meditation and healing practices. The music was recently released on Commune, an online well-being and healing network, accompanied by Mickey Hart's paintings with rhythm. They call it vibrational expressionism, whereas it is vibrated into existence. I use a bass speaker and I control it with the beam, with the monochord, and things rise f I I that you had never uh, suspected from underneath the many layers of paint. I think if we think about the things that make us feel calm and relaxed, any kind of folk music very often has a drone involved. It's shown actually at MIT to clean up amyloid plaques and tangles in the brain. This completely wraps its arms around you. Mickey Hart has intuitively been discovering music's power to heal the past half century, performing the Grateful Dead's version of music therapy in concert to tens of thousands at a time. The lifting of COVID restrictions is allowing him to tour again this summer with Dead and Company and take his music therapy back out on the road. So, Dr. Hart, do you take Medicare payments at your performances here for all of us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, you know, hey, in many states, doctors can write a script for music therapy. So it's not far off where music can be uh, prescribed. For the PBS NewsHour Weekend, Mike Saray reporting from Sonoma County, California. <laughs>